It's time for the social show with Viwe Kyolwana. Social show? Social show. Hello everyone, welcome to the social show. My name is Viwe Kyolwana and for the next 30 minutes, as you know, we're going to be talking all things CSI, CSI and shared value. Um, somebody told me yesterday that CSI, they don't do CSI and I was so shocked and I was like, oh my word, that means uh, they probably wouldn't get along with me. <laughs> but anyway, as you know, um, we are a platform that really wants to shake and showcase what corporates are doing uh, socially to really reinvest um, their time, their energy in building a nation that is, is you know, livable and, and amazing to be in. And uh, if I am the catalyst that's going to help us sort of spread the awareness and um, the, uh, the information, I, I happily, happily choose choose to be that. It's exactly half past nine in the morning and uh, hopefully you have had your first uh, coffee um, and you're ready to hear what's happening in the sector. I am ready to hear what's happening in the sector. So let's get into the news. Nespresso, part of its food giant Nestle, will become the first company to use responsibly sourced aluminium to produce its coffee capsules. The company has signed a memorandum of understanding with major metal company Rio Tinto, which will see them work together with Nespresso capsule manufacturers to fulfill a commitment of of sourcing 100% sustainable aluminium by 2020. Aluminium a Stewardship Initiative, the ACE, ASI certified aluminium, is an important milestone towards reducing the impact that the world's second most used base metal has on the planet. The AC, ASI sorry, sets out standards to promote the protection of biodiversity, respect for indigenous people's rights, water management and low carbon emissions during the production of aluminium. The ASI chain of custody standard creates a traceability mechanism so that end end users like Nespresso can be sure that uh, aluminium they buy has been manufactured by ACI certified producers at each stage of the process. The standard is the first of its kind for any industrial metal. In other news, the city of Okuruleni has opened many disposable sites in Leondale and Phosphorus to eradicate illegal dumping in two areas. Speaking at the official launch of the sites on Thursday last week, member of the Mayoral Committee MMC for Environment and Waste Management Services Ndorsi Shongwe highlighted a need for prudent use of space for development. The revamping process included a new ramps, paving, fence and gates. The facilities receive waste from residents in the areas they are based in where they can deposit waste into bulk containers provided on the site. The type of waste that can be disposed free of charge uh, at the site includes garden waste, rubberless, uh, rubberless, less than uh, one meter cubic center, cubic meters, a recyclable paper, plastic, glass, cardboard, wood and metal. The site is open seven days a week, including public holidays, except for Christmas Day. And to wrap up our news, Kia Motor South Africa handed over a donation of over 60,000 60, towards the Smile Foundation in support of the organization's hashtag Ride for Smile initiative during the 2018 Telcom 947 challenge, uh, cycle challenge. The initiative is in support of the well-known cycle race Ride for a Purpose challenge and sees participating cyclists dedicate their ride to raising funds for Smile Foundation. Cyclists can, of course, raise more than this amount and the top three fundraisers stand a chance to win a selection of prizes. In support of Kia and Smart Foundation provides uh, each cyclist with a branded cycling shirt, a goodie bag, as well as training tips and lessons, among others. Smart Foundation has a comprehensive healthcare vision for children living with facial conditions together with 11 of South Africa's academic hospitals. The organization works to put the smile back onto children's faces with corrective facial reconstructive surgery and treatments and that concludes our news for today my name is Sana. i'm a chemical engineer and i work as a process specialist at presolid as a manufacturing company we are very concerned with ensuring responsible consumption and production therefore we continuously invest in new technology that reduces our environmental impact and increases the energy efficiency of our production part of my job is to experiment with and measure the flow of the raw material it helps us match the material and the product to minimize waste in the production.
There is no doubt that quality education can help reduce poverty, foster economic prosperity, improve health and well-being. It can help a person to understand this world better or build a base for the future. It's clear, it's simple, education is important. However, today there are places around the world where 14 students share just one book. Girls simply drop out because there are no toilets in schools. Today, 58 million children are denied the basic right to education. Those children did not even have a choice, but you do. On the social show, and as you know, we are just coming off the brink of uh, World Toilet Day. And if you didn't know, I don't know where you've been sleeping and which and or under which rock you've been sleeping. If you haven't really realized the kind of sanitation issues that we have in South Africa, let alone in Africa as a whole. If you think about people like Lum Kamketwa, if you think about Michael Komape, if you think about Omari Monono, who all uh, were beautiful children who, you know, died in pit latrine, latrines, um, in the past three four years um you must be sleeping on a rock and that story still it still really messes me up to be honest with you because i really can't believe that in the time that we live in in 2018 where we're using smartphones to detect crime that we can't even find a way in which we can fix our sanitation issues in south africa and um as a result we have a number of really small children dying in such a really disgusting, devastating um, way. So yes, yesterday was World uh, Toilet Day, um, and I think I think everybody everybody in the world must have a problem with uh, the fact that some people don't have access to a toilet. Some people don't have access to clean running water. If you don't have a problem with that, then I definitely think that you must be living in a box or in a in a glass box for that for that matter so yesterday we i attended an amazing event by domestos called flash forum where they were really in discussion around how this issue around uh, access to sanitation or proper sanitation or lack of access to sanitation can be um, um really revisited and reimagined and reworked so that the solution doesn't take so long to really implement it actually always feels to me like everything just takes long to implement the the policies are there the ideas are there the knowledge bases are there even the solutions are there but how when are we getting them into the spaces that they need to get into and that's specifically what was being ta- spoken about yesterday in the forum where we saw a number of stakeholders who are, who are part of this beautiful project to really start um moving this big 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 elephant along and really trying to make sure that more and more people and more and more communities that are not um uh are not are not are not don't have the right um you know access or have any access to sanitation are at least tended to or heard or identified um, so we had a, a nice talk there and a, and a nice um a nice group of people together we had the department of um uh, basic education where obviously a lot of schools are the real main focus where um, more sc- the more they target the schools the better the toilet sort of situation becomes for the whole community that's the first thing um, you had Envirosam which is a great solution um, ba- uh, t- uh, sanitation uh, solution it's a sanitation solution that also is using like really I think simple ways to Re reimagine what a pit, a pit latrine a toilet looks like in this day and age. How we can prevent the deaths. How, if we can't really prevent anything else, how we can sort of make it a little bit more conducive, a little bit better in terms of um, uh, how it smells, in terms of the way in which it is um, engineered, in the way in which um, you know the toilet seats. A lot of different ways in which they are really just trying to speed up the process, and. There's just a number of issues around 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 the lack of uh, sa- sanitation, not only from um, not having an actual built environment for that, but also just the intricacies of pipes and sewage in 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 rural spaces is is devastating. In fact, the fact that there's not a lot of that happening is 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 something that I can't even fathom. So. I wonder then, um, how many of you have been thinking about sanitation and what you're going to do, um, or what you can do for 
for sanitation in South Africa as a corporate and as an individual I think a lot of the time we do think like I was just thinking when I was in there I was like whenever I speak about sanitation from my personal perspective I speak to my mother because my mother's really into that um or my or my father or whoever else is in my in my space at the time it always feels so much bigger than what it actually is it always feels like oh my word where are we going to start uh, you know, w- which which part of this elephant am I going to bite first? And because of that issue and because of that idea, it's very difficult for people to actually stand up and do something. But one of the speakers at this Flash Forum event was one of my really favorite speakers around um, just good work and goodwill in South Africa as an Elim daughter. And she said something so amazing that I wonder resonates with anybody else listening because it definitely resonated with myself. And she spoke about this sort of dual lifestyle that we live as black South Africans where you find yourself working in these spaces that have water, have access to all these things that, um, you know, um, a normal human being needs, right, from proper infrastructure from buildings to even from just an environmental perspective you're around green trees and you're breathing in we're fighting you know climate change and all these amazing things and you get into the office and that's the kind of rhetoric that you have that's the kind of suit and the armor that you put on that's the kind of ideology that you walk with that you understand is that when we're all together we're all speaking a common language we're all together we're all sort of equal when it comes to access because everybody's got a tap at their house everybody's got a toilet in their in their office everybody understands that and and it's, it's a great space to be in and we're all vibrant and confident however when we um especially myself and herself she spoke about um as a closer person we always have to go back to to the villages and where we come from in the eastern cape and that idea um, because it's so you we're so used to it. It's something that we don't necessarily discuss in these spaces. We don't really discuss the fact that, you know, when I go to my grandmother's village, there are no toilets. The toilet is in the garden and you have to walk a specific amount of meters from the house to the garden. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. You are going to walk through the garden to go to the to the toilet in the back in the, the long drop at the end of the, the garden. Um the fact that you have a bucket that needs to be next to your bed in case you want to pee and you don't want to walk out at night. There needs to be something like that. Um, the fact that a number of people that I know in that village that live there happily. I always say pastoral living is not always horrible. It's, ha- it's happy. But at the same time, it, we go to these spaces and then when we go back to to the corporate life and to the city life, it's almost like it never happened. And perhaps the biggest issue is is the fact that we don't talk about our stories enough. We don't talk about the issues enough that when we get to these spaces, we sort of, um, we assume this other role that is more, that is better, that feels better, that is a little bit more classier and a little bit more, uh, just to fit in. And it's not that we don't want to uh, tell people about the issues going on in Makaya. It's just the fact that the space doesn't allow, the conversation doesn't allow. And I think maybe that's where it all starts, sharing the stories. And that's what Anneli was saying. And I completely resonated with that. And I wonder how many of you have ever shared your stories, your embarrassing stories, not even embarrassing, actually, just real life stories about what sanitation means to you when you go back to your home village, your hometown, your home spaces, your home township, whatever the place may be, space may be as a black human being, um, what kind of disparities you've understood around sanitation and maybe bringing that to the forefront in your company may allow them to really look at sanitation as one of their passion projects and maybe you could do something for your own village. And I always say that if I can do something for where my grandmother grew up and my grandfather grew up, I definitely think that we all can. And so that was something that I really took away from Manele's idea and I really 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 want to urge us um, as people who have gone through it to not be afraid and be embarrassed about those stories to really speak about them because once we start breaking these barriers and saying to people look I'm human I work I've got a great brain I mean I, I make you guys millions of rands but I still I still go home in in the eastern cape with all of that done with all of that money that we make and all of those you know, champagne glasses that we, we, we clink during celebrate when we're celebrating something in the office. I still go home to the Eastern Cape to a place called Guachachu and I watch little girls and little boys walk up and down to these pit toilets and it is inhuman. It's inhuman and there's something that we can do individually from that perspective. And so 
for me it would be just gathering a few of my friends who are in the industry who are making some sort of money or know people who are making sort of money and saying hey i've got a village that needs this even if it's a few public toilets or toilets in a school let's try and see what we can do let's find the solutions let's see what works and also remember uh, the sanitation situation does not always work for every single household or every single um uh, community we have to fit it to what we can do you know if the water if the water shortage in a specific place we have to look at how we can decrease that with uh, whatever solution we bring into the that community so there's a lot of different things that she said that i loved and then i think we need to start discussing and if you have any comments or any queries please please let me know your story and let me know um what you can do to sort of help sanitation in your space in your in your community and um maybe there's something that we can do maybe there's something that you and your friends your five friends can do just for one family for a school for a crash for an ecd center whatever it is i'm sure there's something that we can do just to speed up the sanitation issue that is plaguing our country and so that we can live in a country that can guarantee that no child will ever have to endure a death as devastating as that. And, I, and obviously I give all my love and all my condolences to the families who have lost their children to unsafe and hygienic spaces to to go to the toilet. Um, and with that being said, Anela has a crowdfunding initiative in conjunction with World Toilet Day 2018. And yesterday, it was amazing to see a number of people pledge um, and they raised about 600,000 in about 30 minutes because people really understood the issue of sanitation, really understood that they had the power to really do something and fix the lives of a, and more, and not only the children that are around now, the children that are still to come. And um, I have to say it's time, and, and, and I have to say it's time for us to take action, it's time for us to really do something. And Anele is the greatest person to do it because she really does have a knack of um, an understanding of the issue and understanding of um, the 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 movement and and I for one am gonna be I'm gonna be doing my my part and 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 giving some money to this amazing initiative um, crowdfunding platform that she has and you can find it online of course um, and again like I said you don't have to give a hundred million thousand or ten thousand it can just be one rand it can be five rand but knowing that that five
Live from 27 boxes in the heart of Melville, this is brandlive.co.za.